Thanks everyone for being here. I'm Andrew Bellavia. I'm the founder of Aura Futurity. It's a consultancy. I do go to market and branding and content for people in the hearables and hearing and related communication spaces. And so today's conversation is really about hearable devices and how they are converging with mobile voice and also health tech. Now, I could subtitle this actually, Emerging from a Long Cold Winter. And the reason why I say that is because with respect to mobile voice, we really entered a winter period. I don't remember who first said it some years ago, referring to smart speakers, that there was such a rapid buildup of excitement and applications being written for smart speakers, and all of a sudden it was going to plateau. The use cases were going to flatten out, and we were going to enter a winter period before the voice took off again. And I would say that was really true of mobile voice. Because if you think about mobile voice, there was a lot of excitement, including by me. Because one of the things I learned, well, I learned by uh, listening to too much loud music over time. I've been wearing these for about five years now, and they're constantly connected. And one of the things I learned about being constantly connected to Google Assistant is you really start to use it a lot because it's very, very convenient. I tap my ear twice, and I can ask Google Assistant for anything I want. Very typical example, I'm late over a weekend on a business trip in Paris and I'm going to do like I usually do, I'm going to run that town. And it's on a weekend and I picked a few destinations I wanted to go see. And, you know, if it's uh, Saturday in Paris uh, and you're running, having your phone out in front of you, it's going to end badly. But all I had to do was ask for a couple of waypoints, put the phone in my pocket, and I was getting audio navigation as I went. And so... This sort of thing really made a lot of sense to a lot of people, including me, that once you get used to having that voice in your ear all the time, you're going to constantly ask it for things. And I'll even, I'll even mention Brett Kinsella here because he wrote this really good article about the Amazon Echo Buds. Uh, this was a project I worked on with Amazon. I was really excited. I loved his review with the audio quality because that's the part I was responsible for. Key to Alexa's mobile strategy. It looked like mobile was going to be the next battleground, right? The smart speaker you know, was more or less owned by Amazon. Google was trying, but mobile seemed like the battleground. And, and Amazon was going to go after Google Assistant in that space, and they developed a hearable device to do it. And Google was not sitting still. I remember CES 2020, which was right before this conference. Google was everywhere demonstrating Google Assistant and mobile. There's the shopping experience. The tram that runs up and down uh, the strip in Las Vegas was all advertising you know, Google Assistant, everything. It was like maximum hype for mobile voice. Okay, But then what happened? If you think between then and now, where did all of this go? I mean, Amazon doesn't have a mobile strategy anymore, and Google Assistant has really kind of stopped their development and pulled back. I mean, Google Assistant on my phone today is the same as it was three years ago. So why was that? I think you have to look at the way people were using hearables and are using hearables. This comes from Qualcomm. They're one of the major chip makers for both mobile phones and in-ear hearable devices. And they do a state of sound report every year where they look at trends. And if you look at their report from 2022, the latest one, you can see people are using their in-ear devices for watching movies, listening to a podcast, this sort of thing. Music, the like. The use cases we're talking about here, which is mobile voice and health tech, they're really kind of down in there. So people were using these devices situationally. I get on the metro to commute to work, I pop them in, I listen to something, I get to work, I take them back out again. So this didn't really add a lot of value for mobile voice because people weren't taking them out of their pocket to ask Google Assistant something or Siri. They're not wearing them when they're not using them. So I want to watch a movie, I pop them in, I stop watching the movie, I take them back out. And so that's where we're at, or, and that's why mobile voice doesn't seem to have gained any traction. 
voice itself did not drive hearable wear. People would not leave them in just for that, that case. Now, fitness and health is interesting. It kind of pops up there at the bottom. Uh, people are using them if they got earbuds that have a heart rate sensor in it, for example. They'll pop them in during exercise and then they'll take them back out. But that's really one of the technology intersections we're talking about here that's going to change as we go forward. Now, I also want to point out hearing assistance. That particular health tech case, uh, because hearing assistance appeared on this, this survey for the first time. And when you look at people using their earbuds for hearing assistance for roughly an hour and a half, the, you can kind of think of that as corresponding to the case where I meet some friends in a, in a loud pub or restaurant. You know, I'll use them to uh, be able to hear them better against the background noise sort of thing. First time it popped up, it looks relatively low but this is a really dynamic area right now. And a lot of that comes from the Over-the-Counter Hearing Aid Act. This goes back about five years, but the rule with the OTC first came into effect in October last year. And it enables people who have mild to moderate hearing loss to go buy an over-the-counter hearing aid off the rack at a big box store or ordered on the internet without uh, doctor or audiologist intervention. Just simply go buy one, pop it in your ears, configure it, and go. And so that's been six months in effect now, and increasing companies are releasing devices. I actually just did a podcast with the CEO of JLab. They're doing a whole initiative, including over-the-counter hearing aids as low as $99. And JLab, they build about as many earbuds as the entire hearing health industry makes hearing aids. Just JLab, okay? And they're a fraction of the consumer hearable market. So big companies are getting in this space. And what's important about that is this is a device that's meant to be worn. And so people who buy an over-the-counter hearing aid are going to wear them for much longer periods of time than you saw on the chart before. People might wear them through their entire workday, for example. And so this is one of the things, one of the use cases that are going to drive hearable usage up. Another one is noise cancellation. Who has noise canceling earbuds or headsets today? Raise your hands, right? Pretty nice. Especially if you live urban, it's a loud world out there. ANC is great. Well, ANC is getting increasingly intelligent. There are now devices that will situationally change the ANC mode. So you get on the metro where it's super loud, you'll get more ANC. If you're out on the street, you'll get a little less so that you can still hear your surroundings, but it's all muted and, you know, life is better than out there in the raw, loud environment. And so this is another use case that's causing people to start wear them, wearing them longer and longer, right? I leave my house, I get on the train, they're on. I get off the train, I walk down the street to my office, they're on. I can even leave them on in my office because in a quiet setting, these devices will let you hear other people. Someone comes up to say hello to you, you'll hear them. Okay, you can then turn the ANC all the way off and have a conversation, but you're not isolated from your world anymore. So it's really convenient to wear these for longer and longer periods of time. And then there's conversation boosting. This is a little bit different than a hearing aid because what a hearing aid does is amplify those frequencies that are damaged in your ear. So say you, some pitches you don't hear as well as others, the hearing aid will boost those up. There's nothing about amplification here. What they're doing is they're doing some noise reduction and they're doing directional microphones because if you have trouble hearing in a loud environment, if you can reduce the noise and enhance the speech of the person you're trying to talk to, you will hear them better. And there's a, an organization called the National Acoustic Labs in Australia, a very well-regarded research institution in the hearing space. 
they did a study analyzing people with hearing difficulties of all kind. And aside from people who have measurable hearing loss, there's about another 25 million people just in the United States who say they have difficulty hearing, but they don't have measurable hearing loss. It's because the whole auditory system is really complex. One of the first things to go is your ability to discriminate voices and noise. Okay, so think if your hearing is normal in all respects, you're sitting in a crowded restaurant that's loud, you're talking to the person on the other side, and all of a sudden you notice something somebody at the table behind you says, your brain can focus on that. And without even turning your head, you can listen to the conversation behind you. You can discriminate and choose which voice to attend to from that noisy environment. Well, that's one of the first things to go when you get some difficulty in your auditory system, whether it's the beginnings of hearing loss or another auditory issue. And so for those people, raising the volume of the person they're conversing with and lowering the noise level helps a lot. And consumer companies are getting into this. You can do this with AirPods Pro. It's actually an operating system feature. You can go in there and you can enable conversation boost and turn it on so that you get the benefit of higher speech level, lower noise level, and it really works. And studies have measured that there's some benefit for using AirPods Pro. Well, that's, what, 100 million people walking around with AirPods Pro now, and as more and more people engage with this feature, they'll be wearing them for longer. And other consumer companies are getting into it too now. So this is Sennheiser. It's a pretty famous audio brand. If you're, in, if you're into audio, you probably know who Sennheiser is. Well, they're doing one of these as well. Same thing, no amplification. It's noise reduction and directional microphones. And they've even engaged Dee Snyder, who was the lead singer of Twisted Sister, to do advertisements for them. So public awareness is really being raised now. More and more people are starting to think about hearing, understanding, you know, that, that hearing difficulties and hearing loss is a far broader problem than people realized. And advertisements like this are also normalizing wearing earbuds in public places. At the present time, that's still a little bit iffy. You see a lot of people walking around with AirPods, but that's kind of when they're like out on the street or going somewhere. There's still some hesitation to be seen wearing AirPods when you're at the dinner table with friends or family, right? It, people can feel uncomfortable about that. But this is the kind of advertisement and the kind of product that is normalizing that use. Even if you don't use them yourself, you see advertisements like this, you now start to think about people wearing earbuds, not because they want to isolate themselves from you, but because they want to hear you better. So this is driving a different approach to wearing in-ear devices for a longer period of time. Now, this sort of noise reduction right now, this is done with classical acoustic techniques. I can beamform the microphone so they focus more forward, and I can put some basic noise filtering to try and knock down the restaurant noise. But machine learning techniques are getting really sophisticated here and improving this by leaps and bounds. I'm going to show you a demo. I actually ran this demo on my uh, kitchen counter just before I came to this conference. And it's a machine learning based speech from noise separation algorithm that for the demo is running on an iPhone. And I attached a, <clears throat> so the iPhone speaker or the iPhone microphone is picking up the sound and then it's played out the speaker port or it could play to your AirPods. What I did was I attached one of these little wireless mics to it. And so then I could record it. And so you're gonna see that demo. It's a computer. Play Coffee Shop Sounds. Coffee Shop Sounds by Loopable Sounds from Spotify. And it was pretty loud in my kitchen. <laughs> now we're going to try different settings and see how the context awareness uh, dials in and out. So here we are, obviously, fully context aware, so you don't hear any noise reduction. We'll just put it up a little bit like that and talk a little bit more. We'll go a little bit higher and see how that sounds. And of course, we can go about halfway, see what happens there. And then we'll go all the way just to see what happens. Now I really dialed it into the max and I'll talk for a little bit more. 
and then let's turn the whole thing off and go back to fully ambient. All right, so imagine having earbuds that do that, right? I mean, that makes conversing in a crowded bar or restaurant really comfortable to do, and that's, that's coming to earbuds pretty quick. This was uh, done by a company called Augmented Hearing, and if you want to know more, more about that, I can, I can tell you. But so now when you, when you think about this, I wouldn't call it hearing assistance anymore. I would call it another noise canceling mode. Okay, so I have earbuds with adaptive noise canceling. I've got train mode, I've got airplane mode, I've got on the street mode, and I have restaurant mode. Really attractive to be wearing these longer and longer, all right? Because they're adapting to me situationally. I can be listening to something while I'm doing those things too. Like these hearing aids, for example, I can vary the mix between the outside world and the inside world. Like I could be listening to Pink Floyd right now and you'd have no idea I was doing it and I could still be talking to you. I can go anywhere from full streaming to full reality and everything in between. It's a true mixed audio experience, mixed reality audio experience. And that's what these earbuds with adaptive noise cancellation will do. You'll be able to hear the ambient and you'll be able to listen to your music and it'll adapt to the situation you're in. Now another thing, this, this is actually really exciting, it's the new version of Bluetooth. New version just released and it includes a broadcast mode which is called Oracast. And Oracast is kind of like a Bluetooth radio. Okay, right now Bluetooth you can connect to one device, well you can connect to two devices now, but you you can't have 12 devices connected to the same Bluetooth source. With Oracast, you can. So imagine you go into a sports bar or a health club, say the health club, and there's four TVs up on the screen playing different channels. Each one could be broadcasting a Bluetooth signal that you can tap into. The most common way of doing that will be with a phone app. So you get out the app and you say, I want channel three, then you can put the phone in your pocket. All that did was command the earbud what channel to listen to. Uh, now there are people actually doing it, I think it's JBL has it already, for their current model where they've actually got a little screen right on the charging case. And so it's very likely that when they do an AuraCast capable earbud that they'll have that screen so I don't even need the mobile phone. I can pull out the charging case and choose the channel and the charging case. So, now that you have this broadcast capability, you can choose the audio of any of those four screens in the health club, or if there's 10 screens in a sports bar and you're watching a match over there, well, you can tune into the audio of the match over there. Those are great use cases, uh, and you can just think of a lot more. There are some places where, by law, they've put the, the telecoil hearing loops for hearing aids in the metro cars. And this is an older system that uses a magnetic loop to transmit the signal magnetically to the hearing aids. It's an expensive system. You go to a movie theater, you can have it, for example, but they've got to run the big copper loop around the whole periphery of the movie theater, and it costs tens of thousands of dollars. Or cash transmitters are nothing. There's one, one company who already has a little one about the size of this microphone I'm wearing, and they're selling it for like $75 or something like that. So maybe a professional grade one costs couple of hundred bucks, but they're going to be inexpensive, which means they're going to be deployed in many more places. And imagine all train cars having it, so you can be listening with your noise-canceling earbuds and still have the station stops coming into your earphones. Imagine each gallery in a museum broadcasting audio on what exhibits are in that gallery. And then the usual cases like, you know, movie theaters, houses of worship, concert venues, playhouses, and so on. You can see Oracast is going to be spread in many different places. It means you can have a great mixed reality experience throughout your day, even a restaurant. So if, I'm, if I own a restaurant in a place where there's a lot of foot traffic, I might put one of these right out in front of the place. And maybe a little sign that says, you know, tune to channel three for your menu and you'll get a de description of the restaurant. You can just lots of different use cases for this. Again, this is the sort of thing that will drive hearable use up because you do different things throughout your day where you want to listen to the audio and get the mixed audio experience, you'll be able to do that. So 
This has all been audio-based, but there's a lot going on in in-ear health tech as well. This is currently available from a hearing aid company called Starkey. They're doing actually a great job with, called a sensor fusion and machine learning, where they can tell how much you are conversing with someone because, well, it's a hearing aid. So they can tell when you're speaking and they can tell when you're listening. And from that, they can derive the fact that you're actively conversing. And they also have inertial sensors so they can tell your physical activity level. And they're using that to derive a health assessment. Because imagine you're a person living alone, you have hearing loss, which can tend to make a person socially isolate themselves, okay, and they're living alone anyway. So this is a recipe for a lot of comorbidities, cognitive decline, and so on. So by creating this health assessment, yes, you are conversing with other people a healthy amount of the day. You're getting up, you're moving around, you're exercising, and you get a health score, which you can share with a family member or a caregiver, by the way, so that they can see they can see what your kind of health and well-being status is, all within a tiny hearing aid. And this is coming in consumer areas too. The, the intersection, and I'll use the term voice, but let me say audio that comes from a person. Because this company, uh, Sun, they're doing a couple of really interesting things. They can monitor respiration and derive a lot of information about your state of well-being from respiration. And now they're actually working on being able, by changes in the way you vocalize over time, being able to detect the beginning of cognitive decline. That's what they're working on now. And right now they do it through an app. So you would speak to the app, follow the app instructions, but you can easily see this being done in a set of earbuds where you're being monitored on the fly through the app. And this doesn't necessarily have to go to the cloud. The phone app can run the show and collect that data and look for changes over time. Been a lot of research in areas like this. So for example, uh, changes in respiration can detect the beginnings of a respiratory disease of some kind. So this has been done with other things too. There's a company who makes a connected thermometer and they showed that they were picking up surges in COVID a week before people displayed symptoms by changes in temperature. So there's a lot of things you can do when you start monitoring vocalizations, coughing, respiration, and the like. And this is coming. This is coming. This company is doing heart rate monitoring, but this is really interesting because they're simply listening to the sounds in your ear canal using the microphone that's already there for noise cancellation. They're actually able to derive more than heart rate and heart rate variability. They can actually tell if you have an abnormal heart rhythm and so on. So all of these things, you have a lot more input now. And when you hear the term sensor fusion, it's most often used with automobiles, especially autonomous vehicles, because you'll have inputs from radar and camera in the ultrasonic sensors that run around the periphery of the car. And it's the combination of those sensor inputs poured into the hopper, which is a machine learning algorithm, to be able to understand what's surrounding the car. Well, this is coming to in-ear devices as well. And even combination of wrist and ear. So you're monitoring the, a person's you know, respiration. You're monitoring the way they speak. You've got their heart rate, you've got their temperature. And then you create the data set around all the moving variables, and then you can start to really derive some insights into a person's state of health and well-being. And that's the important part, because one of the reasons why health tech and hearables hasn't really gone anywhere beyond the moment I'm exercising is because people don't really care to just like random points of the day go, oh, what's my heart rate right now? It doesn't tell them anything. But now we have the capability to actually create insights based on the sensor data, both in short term and over time. And so this is going to elevate health tech in in-ear devices. The ear is a great place to pick up stuff. 
It's actually better than the wrist. It's more reliable, and you have techniques like mind mics on the previous slide that are now insensitive to things like skin color, which is a problem with the wrist. If the wrist watch isn't worn tight enough and you have darker skin, you can have trouble getting an accurate pulse rate. But these sorts of techniques of using the, the in-ear for heart rate, uh, monitoring temperature there can be highly accurate. And then all the other things, you know, coming, coughing and uh, in respiration and so on, are going to make real useful information available to people on their health and well-being with hearable devices. And so all of that, when you take it, people listening to audio, when they're wearing their earbuds for noise abatement, abatement in different situations, using it for hearing assistance and conversation enhancement, using it for health and wellness, all of those things are going to cause the wear times to go up. People are going to be walking around with earbuds, hearables in their ear for longer and longer periods of time. And to kind of tie this up, to go full circle, we talked in the beginning about how the voice assistants really weren't all that useful. When you're out and about, you really want situational. I want to be able to say, where is a good hamburger restaurant within walking distance of me right now? That sort of thing. Well, that is now becoming possible. Because, of course, this whole conference, right, is about ChatGPT and all its siblings. And it's now possible to have a conversational voice interface. And so imagine not too distant future where you're wearing a device and thanks to AI, it's both giving you, you know, real insights into your health and it's also your conversational interface that you can use at any time. It's, it's your co-pilot, if you will. So I'm over here, I can ask it things and repeat because, you know, chat GPT and, and they're like, they're conversational, they remember what you said. I was trying that here, I, uh, or before I came here. Are there any brew pubs within walking distance of the Chattanooga Convention Center? I used Bing. Bing read them off. Uh, which ones are open on Monday? It named the ones that were. Do any of them have stout on tap? Yes, this one has so and so, right? I don't, you know, I can have a conversation with it. And so the, the combination of health and hearing assistance and audio consumption and a conversational co pilot means to me we're no longer in the state of winter for mobile voice and if i can you know keep the seasonality here and borrow from the opening lines of richard the third now the winter of our discontent in the voice world is made glorious summer it's summertime for hearables and mobile voice and it'll be really really interesting to see how people develop mobile voice experiences. We're entering a whole new era now, I think a really exciting area in the combination of health and voice and mobile devices in your ears. If you want to know more or you want to talk about this some more, I would be glad to. You can reach me on LinkedIn or through the contact on my website, which is what the QR code is for. Yeah, and I'd be happy to have a conversation afterwards. So thank you all.